Hello guys and gals, and welcome uh, to another episode of Skills and Abilities, yes. <laughs> we've been going over a lot of Amazon abilities lately, and today we're going to be going over the Amazon ability Exploding Arrow. Uh, Exploding Arrow is an ability that was always kind of decent, but because it was fire damage, was kind of lackluster, just simply because most monsters in the game are immune to fire, which is a pretty big issue. Um, however, it does have some very interesting parallels to Freezing Arrow, which I've covered recently. Um, due to the fact that it explodes, has a nice little radial effect, causes damage to all monsters nearby, and can pierce multiple times, exploding again, um, and dishing out more damage to multiple monsters nearby. Now, I just did a theory craft, which may or may not already be up. I can't remember what order I'm going to post them in, but uh, we shall see. And uh, basically, I made this Amazon. Uh, this Amazon is my theory craft on what would be kind of like a perfect... Exploding Arrow Amazon using Hand of Justice Bow, Flickering Flame, uh, Arcane's Valor, some nice bow and crossbow skillers, and so forth and so on. Um, now, the, you note, might notice that it says 2,737 Exploding Arrow damage, but on the ability here, it says 3,293. So why is there a difference in the damage written here and the damage written here? Uh, the answer to that question is because any fire damage that you have from any source is added into the explosion, okay? So if you have fire damage on a charm, if you have fire damage on a small charm, if you've got fire damage on your bow, like for instance the level 16 Holy Fire Aura when equipped adds into this, and you can clearly see it add, by the way, if you take the bow off and put it back on, you will clearly see the damage go from 3,104 to 3,293, which is the fire damage being added to the explosion. Um, so every single bit of fire damage that we have is getting added into the explosion and is causing the explosion to do even more damage, which is very, very nice. And it's multiplicative, so the more damage we have on the explosion and the more explosions we have and the more targets that we have nearby, the more damage we do. Um, to the point where eventually, like say for instance if you were firing a, an exploding arrow into the cows, for instance, you would have a massive amount of damage, probably around 1.3 million damage per second, which is pretty darn awesome. Um, and to give you guys an idea, let's go to Frigid Highlands real quick, and I'm going to show you my player count uh, before we get started, so you know what player count we're on. So we're currently on P8. And uh, we're going to go down here to Shank, and I'm going to give you an idea of how quickly this damage adds up. Because Shank always has this nicely grouped group of monsters. And as you can see here, we get all these nice little explosions as we're shooting our arrows through to Shank. And Shank is getting absolutely annihilated with his group. And uh, it doesn't really matter. We also have our Immolation Arrow, which we can fire two at our single targets, which is nice for Exploding Arrow. Uh, and even in P8, it does pretty well. Uh, and this character is not even really set up for defense. She's really just set up for offense. Um, now, single target, it's not really going to do as much. Um, and that is a big downside to the Exploding Arrow. Um, you're really only going to get the 3,200, like 2,700, 3,200 per shot. Plus your physical damage and the fire damage that you're dealing per shot as well. That's also going to come into play. So you're, you're probably looking at around like 4K a shot, single target. Uh, but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the multi-shot. We're looking at how many, how many explosions are we getting and how many explosions are being applied to all the targets nearby. And as you can see, even Eldritch and P8 is pretty much no contest. Um, the distance that uh, Exploding Arrow travels is pretty decent. Um, as you can see here, it goes a pretty nice way past the tree from the waypoint. Uh, whereas some other abilities don't really quite go as far. Like if you were to look at, um, say, Fire Arrow. I think Fire Arrow doesn't go the same distance. It's about the same distance. Um, i trying to remember which ones are the short ones. Uh, but for the most part, it's a pretty decent range. It's not bad. So you can fire from uh, from pretty much off screen, even most times, because it does travel a pretty good distance off the screen, past it, uh, which means that you can you can go to places like uh, you know wide open areas like River of Flame, and you can just kind of fire off in the distance and see if you hit anything. And uh, as you can see at the end 
of the attack, it explodes. So you do also get one additional explosion at the end of the attack, which means you basically get about six explosions total. Five for the pierces, and then one additional explosion at the end of the five pierces, uh, which is pretty sweet. And, uh, and as you can see, in densely packed groups like this, it just annihilates the monsters, even in P8. Um, if I were to do this in P1, there's really no contest. Uh, now, versus between the two, like Exploding Arrow versus Freezing Arrow, Exploding Arrow definitely has, like, no crowd control by comparison to Freezing Arrow. Freezing Arrow literally freezes everything solid. And if it doesn't freeze it, it chills it. And if it doesn't chill it, you know, like, okay, well, then, then it's probably a ghost or something, and it's immune to all sorts of chilling effects. Um, Exploding Arrow does have a small crowd control effect in the form of a faster hit recovery animation. Um, and you'll often see this um, with certain monsters when you fire the exploding arrow into the targets. Um, you'll see them kind of like reel back a little bit for a little, like a few seconds. Uh, actually, it's like a fraction of a second. And this is the faster hit recovery kind of like animation. Um, it offers you a very brief respite usually from the monster's attacks because during that very brief time that the monster is in that recovery animation, they can't do anything. They usually have to stop moving. Um, and if you're firing enough of exploding arrow shots, like per second, into a group of monsters with enough explosions, you'll see the faster hit recovery effects a lot. Um, and I, I call them micro stuns because they're not really stuns, but they're but they definitely function like stuns. It's like a very brief effect on the monster that causes them to reel back and then they're immediately back in the action. Um, and it does help. Uh, this particular build is utilizing Hand of Justice though, which also has some other crowd control effects on it, which is probably what you're going to be using if you do a Exploding Arrows on. I know it's an expensive rune word with Sir Cham Low. It's pretty expensive, but it is your end game for an Exploding Arrow Amazon, bar none. Um, you're going to want that that negative 20% enemy fire resistance that's on the bow. And it also has ITD, which will help since you're an elemental damage character. You're probably not going to build a lot of attack rating. It has hits blinds target and freezes target on it, uh, which comes in really handy since the exploding arrows on has a lot less crowd control than the, uh, than the freezing arrows on does. Um, another interesting thing about the exploding arrows on that... Um, the freezing arrow John San doesn't have is he she also has access to immolation arrow which is slightly better in terms of single target damage than freezing arrow um, and it's slightly better in terms of single target damage than exploding arrow so you get to utilize that along with your exploding arrow to get a little bit of extra oomph out of it uh, which is definitely very nice um, it's also important to note that Exploding Arrow has a physical component. So don't underestimate the additional damage that you're getting from the physical component because that 610 to 1211 um, is mostly your physical damage, which is your life and your mana leech. So if you don't have um, any attack rating at all to hit the targets, like a, for instance when you're fighting a boss, um, it's going to be a little bit detrimental because you're not going to be getting that mana leech um, you're not going to be getting that that uh, health leech. You're not going to be, you know, regenerating at all. Um, now, you can build all sorts of interesting charms, but honestly, the best charms are bow and crossbow skillers um, and fire damage charms. Those are going to give you the biggest effect as far as, like, adding to your exploding damage. Uh, just to give you an idea, I have here a inventory of small charms with 26 to 42 fire damage. These are flaming small charms of incineration. Um, and uh, if I drop these on the ground, you'll notice that my exploding arrow damage decreases with every single charm. Um, it's going down below 2,000 almost, just about. Um, and it's going to decrease with every single charm. Um, as I pick them up, you'll notice I go from 3,000 to 3,083 to 3,125 to 167 and so forth and so on. And adding in that additional fire damage is huge in terms of my damage output. Because even just a small amount gets multiplied five times into five explosions. It also is applied on hit when I hit the target physically, which means it's times five as well. So you take this number here, this 26 to 42, and you can multiply it out. 
So like, uh, for instance, let's go ahead and open up a calculator and I'll show you how much damage a simple 26 to 42 charm adds. So let's add the damage together. So 26 plus 42 uh, gives us 68 divided by 2, which is going to give us 34. Um, it's going to get multiplied five times to 170 damage on our pierces. So each physical attack is going to hit and apply each amount of damage, which is about 170. Um, we also have the explosions, so it's adding into the explosions, and each explosion is going to be the same amount of damage, so another 170. However, the explosions can hit multiple targets. There's no limit. So if there's 30 cows nearby when the explosion goes off and all 30 cows are within the explosion radius, that's 170 times 30, which is 5,100 extra damage that's added for one small charm. And how many of these small charms did we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So times six is 30,600 additional damage that's being added to our explosions because we have these little tiny small charms in our inventory. And, uh, and you see how these little tiny numbers of fire damage or these little tiny numbers of even ice damage for freezing arrow um, have a very nice effect on the way that the skills output their DPS. Um, I don't really think there's a whole lot more to cover with Exploding Arrow. Um, it does have a Fire Arrow synergy, and Fire Arrow is terrible. Don't use it. Um, especially if you're a Fire Zon, it's probably one of the worst abilities that you can use. Um, even on this Fire Zon right now, if I put it on, you can see it only does 3,160 single target damage. The Explosion on the Exploding Arrow does more damage than the fire arrow does in single target. And it hits multiple targets in the process. Whereas the fire arrow is of course only hitting one. Um, and maybe five if, if they're all standing in a line and it pierces through and it hits all five targets. Uh, but there's no explosion component with it. Um, yep, yeah, pretty sure that's it. Fire arrow, I mean, exploding arrow is not the most like ridiculously complicated skill. Um, you do want to attack quickly. It does have a rather high mana cost. Um, the attack rating bonus on it is pretty decent at 389%. I think the only other thing that we can possibly cover with Exploding Arrow is the items that offer Exploding Arrow as a free use ability. So there are a lot of items in the game that, um, that have... Exploding Arrow as free use abilities, and I'd like to go over those real quick because it's actually a pretty long list. Um, the Ravenclaw Longbow, which is absolutely amazing for low-level characters, it gives you free Exploding Arrow. Um, and what this means is that when you fire your bow with a regular arrow like this, the Exploding Arrow will come out. Um, the Ravenclaw has a level 3 Exploding Arrow, and honestly, the level doesn't really matter because if you're any character that's trying to get free Exploding Arrow, you probably have your own fire damage source, like a Holy Fire Paladin uh, would use Holy Fire, of course, the Enchant Sorceress, um, and uh, you know, so on and so forth. You, you generally are providing your own source of fire damage. Uh, Hellcast Heavy Crossbow has level 5 Exploding Arrow. Demon Machine Chuko Nu has level 6. Uh, the Demon Machine, Machine Chukonu is literally the best option for non-Amazons because it has 66% piercing, and when combined with the Razor Tail Belt, you get 99% piercing, which is absolutely amazing for being able to pierce through the targets. Because if you're going to use Exploding Arrow, you want to be able to pierce, and the highest percent of pierce that you can get is the best. Uh, Kuko Kashaku is also a really nice one. It has level 7 Exploding Arrow, and it has 50% Pierce. It's a, a very decent alternative option to a Demon Machine Chukonu. I do feel like the Demon Machine Chukonu is the better option in general, but the Kuko Kashaku is certainly not a bad one. Uh, level 13 on Blood Raven's Charge Matriarchal Bow, but that is unfortunately Amazon only. And then finally, uh, the Brand Rune Word has level 15 Exploding Arrow on it. Um, and it's a very interesting choice for some crazy builds uh, utilizing the, the Bone Spear. I actually made an entire Necromancer around the Bone Spear on the Brand Missile Weapon. I called him the Bowenmancer. <laughs> His video is up if you want to check a look at it. 
Um, utilizing things like Demon Machine Chuko Nu, though, you can build entire characters. Like, for instance, the Strider Paladin that uses the Demon Machine and max level Holy Fire. Or the Enchant Sorceress that uses max level Enchant and max Fire Mastery to get as high fire damage as you possibly can. And then uses the Exploding Arrow on the Demon Machine Chuko Nu. I've done videos on those in the past as well. Um, Ravenclaw is absolutely amazing for low-level characters. If you want to um, do enchant runs, which is basically where you have a high-level sorceress, enchant the entire group, and then everybody uses Ravenclaws and runs around plinking exploding arrows, doing massive amounts of exploding damage on everything nearby, uh, which can be very easily combined with piercing equipment at an early level. The Ravenclaw is level 15, and there is another set called the Erothis set, which is also level 15, that provides 24% pierce at level 15, which means that you can very effectively combine Ravenclaw and Erothis with an Enchant Sork, and you can literally demolish all of normal difficulty with absolute ease. Uh, that's how amazing adding pierce to Ravenclaw is. Um, really not a whole lot more there. It's pretty pretty simple skill. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and uh, keep watching.